Hi everyone, it's Dr. Matsko. In this video, we're going to cover momentum and impulse. And so this is a pretty straightforward experiment. Uh, I'm going to take my smart cart, I'm going to pull it back somewhat, I'm going to give it an initial velocity, and watch it bounce back. Uh, for this, we're going to take advantage of the force sensor that's built into the smart cart. Um, so it's actually at this end, so as, as this bumper gets pressed, it feeds into the force sensor, and that force sensor communicates over here, and it will actually measure the force that's being pressed on this bumper right here. Right? So we can measure the velocity of the cart, and we're going to measure the force that's being uh, put on this bumper uh, by our rubber band here. I'm using a rubber band. Um, you can have a bumper or whatever, a stop. Uh, we can call it an end stop here. All right, so uh, the goal is to just have it the initial velocity. I'm going to start kind of close um, because I know my track has more friction than it should. Um, uh, it's still very low friction, so we're going to, we're going to uh, consider it negligible. So I'm going to start close, and then we're going to do at least four different initial velocities and look at uh, what kind of force it experiences, uh, what kind of impulse it experiences from uh, the stopper, and what's going to be the change in velocity. All right, so uh, let's see. Oh, I can see that our force is actually already a zero sensor now. Okay, there we go. So I got a zero sensor. Make sure, that, and there's nothing being applied on it, so it should be zero. Okay. Uh, it is actually wiggling a little bit. All right. Um, so that's why the velocity is not zero. We'll hit start. Okay. And go. All right. So we we are able to see a force. What a few newtons over there, and then we see our change in velocity. All right. Awesome. So that's one initial velocity. All right. Uh, let's do another one. Okay, start and. Hopefully that was different. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did get a constant velocity up there and constant velocity down there. And then change velocity. Okay, so that's round two. All right, let me try to do a little bit slower. Uh, okay, that was very different. Okay, good. Okay, that's three. Uh, let's see if I can do even slower. That was about the same. Okay, let's see if I can do fast. Okay, that was pretty fast. Okay, we'll do another one. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. Um, you only need four runs, but I'm just doing a bunch because it's really fast. And then we can you you can go back and look at which runs were your favorite or what were the most different. Because um, I'm having trouble really controlling what I'm doing. All right, we'll try to do one more really fast one. I think I can do really fast ones. That's the kind of thing I tell my son. Can you do really fast? Okay. And we'll do one more slow one just to. There we go. So, we can pull up all of these runs, make sure we get, we have a variety of, uh, oops, variety of, uh, this is annoying, uh, uh, velocities, at least four different velocities. Yeah, I see at least four different ones. It looks like three of them are about the same. But at least four different ones. All right. So there you go. That's all it is. Go analyze the data, learn about impulse, and I'll see you guys in the next video.